This is a bait that has been in development for a long, long time. And this literally, I mean, people talk about prototypes. I'll let this fish go. But this is the purest form of a prototype. This literally is uh, a bait that was uh, glued together, put together. I mean, this is an advanced sample. And, uh, you know, by the time this show airs, we'll have the polished, beautiful versions. But the whole theory behind this is think about it. I mean, we all use crankbaits and they're round, right? Well, those same crankbaits that are round are supposed to imitate bait fish that are actually long and skinny. So it only makes sense the folks at Live Target figured it out. We've all had it wrong for years and years. It doesn't imitate, when a fish sees that shape of a crankbait, it doesn't think it's one bait fish. It thinks it's multiple bait fish. And they're trying to break that bait ball apart. Live Target invented the bait ball. And I'm telling you what, so far it's working. If they can catch fish in these conditions, look out. The balance of the food chain is some of Mother Nature's most interesting work, especially in the underwater world. You know, I've been fishing for over 30 years professionally and I've really traveled some great destinations filming television shows. But people always ask me about the predator or prey relationship, and I tell you what, I've certainly learned a lot. The life and existence of a bait fish, well, it's pretty dismal. 99% of their time is basically spent eating or the opposite, getting eaten. You know what I mean? I mean, that's what shad do. Shad follow their food source, and then the bass do the same thing. They follow the shad. So wherever you find the shad food source, that's where the bass are. 4-H fish are always seeking to live yet another day, despite the constant assault by predator fish. Nature has provided the bait fish of the world with various defense mechanisms. Nothing provides security for the bait fish better than being in the center of a bait ball. You know, schooling bait fish to a bass is just like a fully loaded refrigerator. When you're hungry, just open the door and eat. Bait fish really amaze me. There's some incredible sights that I've seen. For example, throwing a cast net on numerous bait. Let's say you're bringing in 100 pieces to the boat for your fishing day. And even while bringing it, I get to see, and the bait are actually outside of the net are staying with that whole school. Why? It's imprinting, it's survival. That's what it's all about. Predator fish rely on bait fish as their forage. They coexist together, predator and prey. It is the eternal eat or be eaten law of nature. Bass love shad, although shad don't really care for bass. As the predator looms nearby, the bait fish will instinctively form into a tighter bait fish school. They can feel it coming long before they can see it coming. Eventually, they will form a bait ball, trying to disarm the pending attack. Shad can feel it through their lateral line. Both prey and predator are on the highest alert. The other thing too is there's other game fish like let's say tuna or jack cravels, very fast moving fish, rooster fish. These fish disorient the bait fish. As the predator approaches, the bait fish scatter. The bait ball literally burst. They'll go in there and tear up those schools as much as they can. The mass is broken. And this disorient them, and then I'll tell you what, the feeding frenzy might last for five minutes in fact. It's pandemonium. It's an adrenaline filled pan. So they immediately try to regroup. As soon as those game fish disappear, guess what those, you know, the bait fish does? They all come back together and say, oh my God, how many did we lose on that one? The desperate bait fish swim erratically until pairing occurs with the goal of reforming the sanctuary of yet another bait ball. This is the live target bait ball series.